you may have heard, a popular buzzword going around is referred to as emotional intelligence. You may have heard this popping up in the workforce as a new leadership style. And actually, in reality, it really is not that new. It is an idea and a philosophy that originally surfaced in the 1960s and has regained strength today. And now we find it in the business world as one of the primary leadership skills. And emotional intelligence is a process in which, as an individual, you begin to tap into who you are. What are your passions? What are emotions are you feeling in a particular moment, maybe in a moment of conflict? What are the emotions that you feel? And then how do you respond to them? In the same hand, emotional intelligence is not only figuring out who you are, but also figuring out how other people's people respond. What motivates them? Can you anticipate how they may respond and why they were responding in the manner that they are? It's a process that looks at you as well as the individuals you're having a conversation or an interaction with. It's actually one of great wisdom because it takes your blinders off and begins to help you see a much fuller picture. And that is exactly what Jesus has done in today's scripture reading. He begins to see the world from a different perspective. In today's scripture reading, we actually hear of an encounter with Jesus and the disciples. And today's scripture reading is actually the final of our four-week journey. Of our four-week journey. Of our four-week journey into um, Mark 10. And what this journey is about is about where Jesus and his disciples are on the road and they have a variety of encounters. And encounters with people who are grumpy and angry and as well as encounters with people who are in different situations and interactions with children. So the last four weeks we have been seeing Jesus and his encounters with different people in the community. And today we hear about the story of a blind man who's on the road. And Jesus uses the emotional intelligence for this encounter with the blind man in the crowd. I think about emotional intelligence and I think about how challenging that can be. Because I know as an individual I am not a morning person. I tell you, I just don't function well anytime before 10 p.m. I'm just not a morning person. All of my creativity starts at 10 p.m., not 10 a.m. And when I worked for the state of Wyoming, I had this amazing employee who really got me, who understood me. And she finally told me after our many years of us working together, she said, you know, I would never even come into your office until I heard the first soda pop pop in the morning. <laughs> then she knew I could, she could come in and have a rational, uh, full conversation with me. My world started rotating at the signal of that soda pop, or for many people, the equivalent to first coffee, cup of coffee in the morning. She got me, she knew who I was and took that into account when she had encounters with me. But I also know my daughter and I, we are both evening people. We are, neither one of us are morning people. You should have seen us in the mornings when we were trying to get ready for school, make sure that she got to the bus on time. The fewer conversations we had, probably the better. We both were just kind of in our worlds, getting ready, getting dressed, getting our school bag and our work bag together so we could get out the door. 
And when she moved in with her dad her final year of school and now and continues to live with her dad while she's in college, she said to me the other day, you know, Mom, I love living with Dad, but sometimes it's difficult. I go downstairs to the kitchen in the morning. I get my cup of cereal. I just want to eat my cereal. My dad, he wants to have a full-blown conversation with me. <laughs> she gets who she is as individuals. We get who we are. And then taking that one step further and understanding who other people are and what their motivations are, what makes them tick. That is emotional intelligence. And that is what Jesus demonstrates every day when he has an, account, an encounter with a crowd of people. We see it in today's story. We first know that this blind man, he hears and he understands that Jesus, a miracle worker, is here in town. And he figures that he wants to have a conversation with Jesus. And so as Jesus and his disciples are walking out, he stops and he begins to yell, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What's interesting is how the crowd responds. The crowd actually begins to try to silence the individual, silence this man. They tell him, no, don't, Jesus doesn't want to bother, be bothered by you. So they tell the man to shut up. But then, what does the man do? He shouts. Even louder, have mercy on me. What is interesting is how Jesus responds to the crowd. He doesn't go to the crowd and begin to criticize the crowd. He doesn't say, oh my gosh, don't you see that there is somebody in need of help? You should be helping that individual. He doesn't go to the crowd and begin to criticize them on their faithfulness of God and to him. Instead, he then simply says, call the man forward. And at that point, we begin to see the demeanor of the crowd change significantly. It's no longer an angry crowd, but rather the crowd now begins to say, you know what, get up. He, Jesus, wants to see you. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Jesus has called you. So the demeanor of the crowd changes from anger to encouragement to inspiration. And how did Jesus do it? Simply by showing love, not criticism. Then the crowd and, and everybody gets the man and Jesus together. And then Jesus' response is yet again amazing. Jesus says, what can I do for you? How many times have we been asked, what can I do for you? I was reading a story in which a man tells that he and his family was on vacation in Spain. And as they were on the airplane, they were, they were getting ready to depart, his tooth cracked significantly and exposed all kinds of nerves in his mouth. And all this pain started occurring. And this pain became so problematic, it really disrupted his vacation, so he knew that he needed to find a dentist in Spain. You can imagine how challenging that could be, one, because of the language barrier, but two, it's just the practice itself may be different than what he's accustomed to here back in America. But he went anyways because the pain led him to the dentist. And he said the first thing that 
the dentist asked is, how can I help you? The dentist looked inside of his mouth and didn't make an assumption. Because as he said, after all, if you look inside my mouth, the dentist probably recognized that there were tons of problems, potential cavities, loose teeth, broken tooth, exposed nerves. But instead of making an assumption, he simply said, how can I help you? That is exactly what Jesus did to the blind man. A blind man who people in the town recognize as someone who does not have sight comes to Jesus and asks for mercy. And Jesus uses the kindness and simply says, how can I help you? Instead of making assumptions. That's what I love about today's gospel reading. It's not about thinking about you, your assumptions of somebody else, your initial emotions, your pain, your lenses in which you see the world, but rather Jesus is modeling the behavior of asking others how they can be helped. We can't assume what somebody needs. It is much more helpful if we are told how we can help. This is the model of love that Jesus is sharing with us this week. If we can model the love of helping others, being compassionate for others, we can be the example of Jesus an example of bringing peace to an angry crowd. The example of simply asking somebody, what can I do for you today? May it be so. Amen.